Hello guys, so today is the day when we will summarize the first month of our portfolio project and you can check the first video, it was from the beginning of, of October 3rd or 4th um, uh, October, I think, when we started. We choose some of the companies for the late stage of the bull market in which we are right now apparently took the trades and alongside it I choose another four companies which I think could potentially be good as well but they were chosen more or less randomly I wasn't thinking about them that much I just selected some of the big companies that I like and yeah we can put it this way so now uh, before we dive into the trades themselves and profitability I want to talk about the companies that uh, I added to the portfolio I haven't closed any trades, any trades yet, although I think in the month or maybe even weeks I will clo close a couple of them uh, on the companies that I choose randomly. Since I'm investing my own money, I need to mitigate the risk. Don't get me wrong, it was a fun to take those uh, trades, the results you will see soon, but I guess you understand that I need to make adjustments in order to protect the capital. Okay, uh, so, uh, for the, uh, so the first company that I added is Visa. And let's talk about the reasons for taking a trade. I will mention only a couple of them because if I would talk about it more broadly, the video would be too long. So, uh, first one is the share price movement. The Visa shares outperformed uh, the industry over the year. With a solid foundation, the company's stocks is expected to continue performing well into the future. Second one, revenues, which will gradually increase. Revenues have grown consistently over the years, reaching a 10-year CAGR from 2009 to 2019 of 12.8%. However, revenues fell by 5% in 2020 and again by 4% in the first half of 2021 due to the loss of business, due to the we know what. However, in the first half of the 2021 financial year, an increase in the volume of payments was recorded, which is the main service revenue. And the number of transactions proceeded, which is the main driver of data processing revenue, year on year, reflecting on improvement in operating conditions. So I believe the company will recover revenue growth in the coming quarters, thanks to a strong market position and attractive core businesses, which continues to be driven by new deals, extended deals, accrued acquisitions, rising card spending, the transition to digital payment and an expansion of uh, service offerings. While the disease is likely to exert some pressure on revenues, this rate should continue to increase as normal returns. So next one is inorganic growth. For Visa mergers and uh, acquisitions, partnerships and also the minority investments uh, are some of the ways uh, to achieve growth. These moves have helped the company remain a leader in payment networks with the payment volumes 50% higher than that of its closest competitor, which is MasterCard. Some of the acquisitions made by Visa include Earthport, Payworks, uh, Verify, Yellow Paper and uh, Rambus, a ticketing and token service business. So these acquisitions and investments will accelerate its progress and expand the boundaries of its capabilities and networks. Visa recently announced it would acquire Tink, which is a European open banking platform. This move is in line with Visa's efforts to become a part of an innovation in open banking that is rapidly being adopted by banks. Last one is technological innovation. Visa continues to invest in technology to further strengthen its already leading position in the payments market and minimize the impact of fraud and protect consumers and mer merchants information. One of Visa's main tasks is to ensure the security of payments as they move from the physical to the digital environment. VisaNet, Visa Token Service, Visa Direct and Visa Checkout are some of the platforms uh, the company has developed in recent years to develop its digital platform. The company is also pushing technology, including contactless payments and scanning, tapping payments and secure distance trading, which should become the main payment methods in near future. With just 15% of the world's payments made digitally, Visa has enormous scope for growth in the burgeoning payment sector in the years to come. Next company is PayPal. 
So let's discuss the reasons to buy shares of this company. Noteworthy is the security and simplicity of PayPal transactions and the fact that it is both a brand and technology pioneer, which sets it apart from the competition. The company offers simple and affordable financial services and digital payments facilities, allowing customers and merchants to access and flow their money anywhere, anytime, and through any connected device. The company's risk management and tokenization help to secure the legality of transactions and prevent illegal or fraudulent actions. transactions. The PayPal support system offers customers more choices when opening a PayPal account. Account settings and payment experiences increase customer engagement. Additionally, PayPal's two-way platform allows it to develop and maintain direct financial relationship with both customers and sellers. The platform connects customers and sellers by facilitating a unique end-to-end -end product experience for both parties. Sellers are able to track a customer's behavior and engagement using PayPal data. The platform enables PayPal to maintain a deep and trusted relationship with its growing merchant and customer base. PayPal continues to forge strategic partnerships. The company ongoing strategic, par uh, strategic partnerships with Visa in the US, Europe and Asia Pacific provide uh, customers with a greater choice, point of sale acceptance, instant cash out and data quality. Uh, this partnership provides the company with some economic incentives, such as Visa incentives to increase transactions volume and great certainty on uh, Visa's long term fees. This partnership has recently been extended to include Europe and Asia Pacific region. PayPal and Mastercard also has been, have been working together for 10 years. Currently, they run a multi-year program of consumer ca credit cards under the common brand of PayPal Extras Mastercard. Mastercard is a clear and equal choice of uh, PayPal wallet payments. This partnership uh, has recently been, ex been extended to Europe, Latin America, Canada, Africa, the Caribbean and Middle East. PayPal's uh, partnership with Google, Facebook, Pinterest, Alibaba and an Intuit are also showing positive results. Over the past year, the company has been in advantageous uh, position for partnerships with a number of original equipment manufacturers, OEMs, the technology companies, mobile operators, retailers and financial institutions. In addition, new PayPal partnerships with the Kaiksha Bank, Bankia, HSBC and the Barclays Bank are helping the company increase its customer base. Additionally, the introduction of new services and offers for debit and credit card users through collaboration with JP Morgan and Bank of America helped attract customers to the platform. I need to mention also that OneTouch is still PayPal's fastest, fastest accepting product. This platform allows customers to make purchases through various sellers' sites or applications without the need to enter additional information. OneTouch is currently a secular driving force behind PayPal, with a clear advantage in the middle area where it is seeing an increase in conversions. The platform has opened, has opened up new market opportunities internationally, with the possibility of expansion in many other Venmo markets. Venmo continues to strengthen PayPal position in mobile payments as well. This application allows you to transfer money between family and friends via mobile devices. In the first quarter of 2021, the application proceeded $51 billion, an increase of 63% over the previous year. The company is constantly adding new features to this app. Venmo users can now pay with over 2 million PayPal merchants across the United States. Moreover, the company is making great strides in acquiring new net users. In addition, the company's ongoing partnership with MasterCard will continue to assist uh, the adoption of Venmo. And with all this, Venmo will continue to deploy more and more buyers under its major brands. PayPal has a solid balance sheet that makes uh, stocks uh, attractive to investors. The company's net cash was 4.1 billion as of March 31st, 2021, and unchanged sequentially. Furthermore, debt to equity ratio for total was 31.5% as of March 31st, 2021, of course, compared to 30.9 as December 31st of 2020. While rising debt to capital remains an issue, the lack of current debt remains positive. I need to also address the negative side because PayPal operates in a highly competitive global payment industry 
with the, particip uh, with the participants such as Square, Google, Amazon, Apple, as well as the traditional financial services companies such as MasterCard and Visa. As an intermediary, PayPal is exposed to competition for, uh, from these companies in the area of digital wallets, although they have not gained much popularity so far. So, the last company is Facebook, or should I say Meta? Well, Facebook continues to see significant increases in online and mobile advertising spending. The company intends to take the opportunity offered by the constantly growing video viewership on social media platforms. Online video is the most lucrative component of digital advertising, as video ads generate more revenue than their photo and text-based substitutes. Facebook is trying to incorporate more and more video-oriented content to earn more ad dollars. The company launched Watch, a dedicated tab for watching videos to achieve its goal. Instagram emerged as an important, important, important uh, cash cow for, uh, for Facebook after introducing its advertising platform to advertisers around the world. To attract more advertisers, right now 3 million and still counting, Facebook unveiled its uh, promotion tools, posts, and, companies, uh, and company performance ratings directly on Instagram. In addition, Facebook is also looking for ways to monetize Instagram stories. And adding the checkouts uh, feature to the platform is a step in that direction. This feature allows uh, Instagram users to browse and purchase products uh, from 23 of the uh, top US brands, all from within the Facebook app. In addition, the solid adoption of the Explore tab, which is used by over 50% of Instagram users each month, increases the platform's monetization capabilities. Recently, the company started placing ads on, on the Explore tab, which is supposed to fuel the top line. Messenger and WhatsApp are other extre extremely valuable acquisitions. Facebook is aggressively work working to monetize the opportunities uh, presented by its affiliates. The company is very excited because it has launched the Messenger app, uh, which has over 1 billion users, uh, for developers to create chatbots that will allow companies to extend customer service and other transactions. Facebook is uh, rewriting the app uh, from scratch to make it the fastest and most secure mainstream communication platform in the world. It also works to bring end-to-end -end encryption and ephemera to enhance the user experience. Ephemeralism and end-to-end -end encryption also fuels WhatsApp popularity. According to the company, WhatsApp status is the most popular ephemeral uh, stories product in the world. Facebook continues to promote WhatsApp business as a private means of interaction between businesses, businesses and customers. Noteworthy is the rapid adoption of WhatsApp business by small and medium-sized businesses. The company builds new tools such as product catalogs that entrepreneurs can use for free to attract potential customers. Moreover, increased communication increases the, chance, the chances of Facebook entering the lucrative payment market. The company is still testing the payment feature on WhatsApp in India and intends to launch the same in other countries soon. You know Oculus, right? This is the result of companies' ambitious activities in the field of augmented reality slash virtual reality, which is the AR slash VR. And this technology is quickly becoming a lucrative business opportunity. In addition, Facebook announced that it will spend over $3 billion on VR over the next 10 years. The company is investing heavily in the development of the VR content ecosystem. The launch of the VR headset, Rift and Oculus Quest, its first all-in-one headset without wires and full freedom of movement are a step forward to this goal. On September 16th, Facebook introduced the Quest 2, its next generation VR device, starting from $299. The company also announced a multi-year partnership with the Ray-Ban parent Elisor, Luxotica. Okay, <laughs> I got this right. The two companies in collaboration will release a pair of Ray-Ban brand smart glasses in 2021 still. Facebook also announced Project Area, which will help him uh, develop the first generation of wearable AR devices. Facebook is believed to have pioneered the creation of social networks and therefore has the first uh, mover advantage in uh, this market, of course. However, as, as the developed regions matured, Facebook took steps to penetrate emerging markets in Southeast Asia, Latin America and Africa. Of, of all of the places, uh, India deserves a special mention in terms of user growth. 
The second largest country in the world offers great potential for the company, with the China of the radar India could prove to be a great growth engine for Facebook. This is uh, primarily due to the growth of a well-educated middle class, increasing purchasing power and rapid adoption of smartphones in the country. Facebook investments in Reliance uh, Geo is uh, a step towards gaining a significant footprint in the country. Facebook also has a strong balance sheet and generates significant cash flow, which makes it attractive to investors. As of March of uh, 31st of uh, 2021, cash and cash equivalents and negotiable securities were $64.22 billion compared to $61.95 at December 13th of 2020. The company continues to invest in the development of its platforms and products. I believe uh, that uh, the company's ability to generate strong cash flow will help her make a further investment in production development and acquisitions in the future. So, in addition, free cash flow grew 6.5% year on year to 7.82 billion in the first quarter of 2020. Okay, that would be all as for the companies. I hope I didn't bore you that much. Uh, right now, let's uh, switch to the platform and talk about the trades. Okay, guys, so we are in the client's cabinet and maybe let's go down straight to the portfolio because you see the current change, uh, which is uh, plus 581 euros at the moment. It doesn't include the, the commissions on trades, so the uh, real result is uh, slightly, slightly lower. I guess it will be 10 or 20 euros, maybe the max if we combine every uh, uh, every trade uh, there is open. So you have uh, clearly the new trades from uh, the Visa, PayPal and Facebook. So uh, yeah, uh, as you see, the date is from yesterday uh, because uh, the, at the time I am recording, it's uh, Saturday. So the market is closed and I had to do it uh, prior to the um, prior to the video. Uh, so yeah, as you see, the most gainers are the ones from my portfolio, which is the Home Depot and Nvidia. Both uh, gave us the return of more of around 200 euros. Next is Moderna, uh, which is based on uh, my just simple assumption. Uh, then we have the Caterpillar and uh, next would be the Apple uh, Qualcomm. And last would be 3M and Intel, which uh, still is in with it was under uh, under the uh, profitability line we can we can say so still we have the trade from previous video on the usd cat and on the innovio but uh, these are projects from uh, different uh, from different videos so uh, i will talk about them later so if you analyze the results if you combine it all, you can clearly see that uh, almost 500 out of those uh, almost 600 euros of profit is due to the stocks from the initial portfolio that we choose to uh, we choose to take. So the trade, <clears throat> as I said, I didn't close any trade, but the potentially uh, potentially tr potentially uh, trades to be closed are on Moderna and on uh, 3M. They have uh, right now the least uh, uh, the least possibility for for growth. Mm, as for Moderna, I think it's the company with a too big, too high risk at the moment, and uh, I will look at this stock and probably close it in a matter of a couple of weeks. And as of uh, 3M, uh, it's next company that I would be getting rid of because it is a company that in the current stage of the market can fluctuate and uh, bring negative results. But apart from that, all is good. Uh, right now, of course, uh, due to the initial buying, um, there is uh, a small loss at the moment. But we are continuing uh, this project uh, for the next month, so we will see the results. Uh, we will see the results in uh, 30 days from now. So now let's also check the uh, also check the charts. So why I choose those three stocks in terms of the technical analysis because. Uh, I was also considering, for example, Netflix, also Google, but both of them uh, were too expensive at the moment to buy. And I will show you what I have on I me. Mean. So let's uh, check uh, PayPal chart. And I think it doesn't need any more explanation. If you zoom out, we are right now on a pullback at the moment. We are at this very strong uh, resistance level. 
and yeah that is i think that is a good moment to, to buy into the stock and all of the fundamentals i was mentioning a minute ago so let's go further let's go for facebook again the same situation and if we add this 200 period moving uh, average which we which i was talking about if you would like to look for shorts sma and let's set it for 200 you can see that right now we went a little bit below this uh, 200 period moving average but uh, the chart doesn't say anything doesn't show anything uh, of uh, anything if we in terms of in terms of some candlestick chart patterns or something like that that could suggest for us a deeper pullback from that moment some deeper correction uh, so let's go again for d1 and i had on mean something like this right so uh, I do not reckon something like this will happen at the moment because we have uh, two strong fundamentals and the current situation with this whistleblower it is clearly visible uh, uh, manipulation to destabilize uh, the, you know the, posi the Facebook position so um, let's go let's go further let's leave a Facebook chart and let's go for netflix and you see what i have on me right if it would be at this moment still it would be a good opportunity but right now after uh, this uh, strong uh, rally if you if you have the long if you are uh, you know um, combining your long-term portfolio netflix is a great company for the late stage of uh, and uh, and even beyond but as for me if i'm trading right now on cfds for midterm for midterm trade with the midterm horizon it is not good to buy in that moment and i was also talking about google right so let's let's go for google and yeah we see that uh, right now we um, slightly break out of uh, this uh, this resistance zone so right now i think it is uh, too expensive but if we will see some pullback to this levels and the levels of resistance or we will be uh, still uh, testing this resistance i think i will add a trade on uh, on that too but for now it is too expensive i already added two stock uh, three stocks to that and uh, yeah i think for the moment it is enough so we will see during uh, the next weeks what will happen and uh, yeah we will decide so if you want to check the history you can see the previous trades and nothing was uh, traded uh, on this account apart from all of the projects that are recorded on the videos so yeah uh, i think that will be all for this video uh, thank you for watching if you want to see more of course just follow the channel and yeah see you in the next one guys take care bye